This is the Clay Golem, and we need to talk about Nesnar. So in Foundry, we've been looking at building the Fandelva and Below, the Shattered Obelisk um, adventure series, uh, getting that ready to play, putting everything in, the maps and all things like that. Now, the Fandelva uh, and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, is a newer... It's not new, new. It's a newer release of an older adventure that was just called um, Fandelva and Below. Um, and it was based on brand new players to get them involved in the game, a bit like Stormwreck Isle. Um, it preceded Stormwreck Isle, uh, and it was a free adventure to get people started. Uh, and it's a good little adventure. Uh, it's got plenty of stuff in there. It's got goblins to fight. Of course, new characters are always going to fight goblins. Um, but it's a bit of political intrigue. There's some thugs they need to deal with. They need to make a town happy. All sorts of bits thrown in there. It's quite a nice little adventure. Quite straightforward um, for new DMs as well as new players. Um, and lots of opportunities to jazz that up. Now, ignoring the, the later chapters that came with the Shattered Obelisks stuff, the first four chapters designed to take characters through from first through ultimately to fifth level are all based around the idea of trying to find a particular artifact that is in an old mine and helping a dwarf called Gundren to basically refound that mine and solving all sorts of problems along the way. Now the main protagonist for that section is a drow called Nesnar. Uh, now Nesnar goes by the name of the Black Spider and Black Spider is mentioned repeatedly throughout the module, little hints about the Black Spider and things. But there's a problem, or at least there is for me. Nesnar is very two-dimensional. So in the module, when it talks about his motivations, it pretty much just refers to the fact that he wants to mine and its treasures for himself. That's it. Okay, so um, here's Nesnar from the module. Uh, I'm not a fan of this artwork for, um, for showing players myself, but everybody's got their own tastes, of course. So the whole reason... Everything that's going wrong, the attacks by bandits and goblins, the, the issues in town with the red brands. Um, don't want to give too much of the detail away in this video. If you're following me making it, you're pretty much, you know, it's a bit quite a big spoiler. Um, but the whole motivation behind everything that's happening is he just wants to get his hands on some money. Um, <laughs> it's, it's lame. It's a bit weak. So what I want to do is I want to give you an alternative motivation for Nesnar that makes a bit more sense. It's a bit more drowy in my mind. Um, and it, I think it just gives some further options when they encounter Nesnar rather than it being, oh yeah, there's the big bad, kill it, brilliant, game over, you win. Um, yeah, it's a little bit too linear for my liking. So who is Nesnar actually? Well, Nesnar is a drow. He's come to the surface um, from his drow city. I haven't really decided what drow city, and it doesn't really matter for this. Um, if in doubt, you know, make it up yourself. Um, but why has he come to the surface? Why would you do that? Why is he after this mine? Well, remember that this mine, if you read the bit, little bit of history in the book, it's a well-known mine, very powerful with this well of um, this uh, forge of spells within it which is the ultimate prize now there's no reason Gundren knows about it and his brothers and it's kind of common history for those who are interested that this thing existed so of course drow will know about it so why would they not also seek it in the way that Gundren is seeking it for the wealth and things like that absolutely so why is Nesnar putting all of these resources because let's face it to have he's paying out an awful lot of money to bribe and pay off people he's got doppelgangers he's got all sorts of things on his side why is he going to all that effort coming to the surface which he knows is dangerous to do this so here's my plot hook Nesnar is a student so he we know he's a wizard but he is currently a wizard who is completing his equivalent of his PhD so he wants to 
Uh, he wants to finish his major project to show to his superiors within his university, within this drow university, that he's got what it takes and that he should be given his equivalent of his doctorate so that he can go off and do his own thing, do his own research, etc. Uh, and have his established place within drow society as a learned wizard, um, earning respect and everything else. That's much more important to him than the money that comes with it so how does he go about this well all of them all of the drow who want to um who want to uh, uh what's it called what's it called when you finish university you finish school graduate that's the word <laughs> my brain eh um so all drow who want to graduate especially from this level of university get their equivalent of their doctorate they have to do something unique, just like if you were doing a PhD. They have to do something unique that hasn't been done before, that adds value to drow society or drow knowledge, research, etc. Something like that. Okay, if that makes sense. We just use that academia base for this. Um, it's just obviously a lot of their PhD kind of stuff might be a little bit more nefarious. So that's what he's doing. Now he's read about this and he's decided that for his PhD he is going to reclaim the Forge of Spells so that it can be studied, potentially dismantled and moved back into the Underdark. We have no idea if that's even possible or if not at least secure it as a site so that it can be used by the Drow. Um, that's a much stronger motivation. It's about respecting Drow society, it's about his personal um, achievements and things like that rather than just I want some cash because he might as well just turn over some banks and things like that you know it doesn't make sense so how does he go about doing this well to my mind he's going to need some help um, and we know that he's got access to all these troops so the university uh, grant a bursary as part of funding the studies if you like but obviously it's a very practical kind of studies and he is given access to some resources and he chooses some doppelgangers so he is given some doppelgangers to help him and they become his main source of influence um bribery and everything else in the surface world and that ties in because we see there are doppelgangers working with with um with clark um with the uh with the bugbears who are controlling the goblins so we've got that relationship there of course they think they're dealing with the black spider directly but they're not they're dealing with doppelgangers so it's a way that he can keep himself safe while also being in several places at once he's got his hand in the red brands and all those sorts of things and doppelgangers are really really good tool they're very very drow um, to be able to use those for manipulation um, coercion and all of those kind of spy activities that they can do because that doppelganger obviously just changes shape takes over somebody and walks in and can convince people um, that they're important people and they should be listened to bribing etc etc so his main motivation is exactly that okay so he wants to complete his phd so his personal reputation is on the line here so he's going to stop at nothing that means when the characters get to uh, wave echo cave um, and they are going through that what is um, Neznar's motivation it's about completing his studies it's not about killing the characters so there becomes an opportunity here for negotiation and things like that he might decide not to kill them at all he may decide that they are useful in securing those resources it's possible they could even negotiate a timeshare or a shared resources kind of thing remember Neznar is not wanting full control of the wealth what Neznar wants is to finish his research so he can get that PhD tick in the box uh, and get all of those other things. That doesn't mean he won't betray them later, because, you know, he will. <laughs> he absolutely will. Um, but it means he gives him more options in how to deal with those characters at that time. And if he actually tells them that that's what he's doing and he's there for research purposes the players are much less likely to just want to butcher him as well. So it's a good way for him to convince them, hang on a minute, don't just beat the cack out of me. 
that's not you know that's not necessary there's a different way we can work this out he can buy himself time he can do some maneuvering um, he can get himself ready into a position where he can do that and if he finishes his research and he gets his tick in the box it may be that then he's going to get even more support to take back the um, the forge of spells in a more militaristic way of course the adventure isn't intended to go down that route but um, if you're running it it's your adventure you do what you like with it so my next problem with Nesnar, now I've put that in place, I'm happy that he's actually got a reason to be there. Okay, it makes sense that he's there rather than just robbing a banks. Um, my next issue is, is that graphic. I don't like him. So here is my new Nesnar. Okay, so I have reimagined him, a new image. No, I did not draw this. <laughs> I've used AI to create this. I'm going to do another video um, shortly after this one showing you how you can also use certain AI to generate some character images for NPCs and things. Okay, because you've seen me try to do maps. You do not want to see me try to draw. It's, it's absolutely terrible. So I'm going to, in inverted commas, cheat and use AI to do it for me. So this is our new Nesnar. Um, this is going to be the imagery I use for him and I'm going to create his token from it. Because in the actual adventure itself, um, there isn't one. There was only that previous image we looked at which is a little bit meh. Um, and he hasn't got a token. Well, hang on a minute. If you're going to fight him, I want a token of some description. So here he is. This is Nesnar, the Black Spider, a PhD student who has come to the surface so that he can research and report back and finish his thesis um, on the Forge of Spells and therefore gaining his personal prestige, prestige for his family, more power, um, more influence within Drow society. That's his main aim. Even if he loses the Forge of Spells at the end of the day, as long as he manages to complete and tick that box, he's a happy bunny. So I hope this has been interesting. If you're doing something completely different with Nesnar, because let's face it, the module is really, really weak on his motivation. If you're doing something different with him, let me know. That'd be great. See ya.